What's up, Cal Gang? Welcome back to some mechanics of materials. So we're solving 6.81, we just solved 6.80. Um, so check that out if you haven't already, or maybe you're looking for that one. But let's solve it. So we're given this beam, right? It has these distributed loads, and their weight is five kip per feet. So we know that our max bending stress that our beam can support is 22 KSI. No, it's not. That was from the previous problem. Spoilers, no, I'm just joking. It's, that's not the answer, guys. Don't trust, don't trust that, okay? That's not the answer. So what we're actually trying to find is the largest max bending stress that the beam can support, given that the, the distributed load is five kip feet. And how are we gonna do that? Well, we're gonna use our equation. The maximum bending stress is moment times y, which is distance from the centroid of the cross-sectional area, over moment of inertia. So they're gonna to need to solve for all of these things. First of all, moments, right? We're looking at this beam, and it doesn't, we don't know what the maximum moment is. We need to figure out where moment is maximized. And how are we gonna do that? Well, we can basically, I draw this force body diagram, right? We're gonna to need to draw a moment uh, diagram, right? We're gonna to need to figure out where the moment is maximized. However, using some knowledge that we have, we should be able to figure out uh, how to do this a little easier. And the way we can do that is we can figure out that this, uh, this beam is gonna be symmetrical, right? This and this are going to be the same, as you can see in our force body diagram. A of y and B of y are going to be equal to each other because we're symmetrical. And if we're symmetrical, we can figure out where moment is maximized. So let's look at our image here. So we have a supported A and a supported B and nothing in the middle. And we have these weights. Both of them are pushing downward. So if both of them are being constantly applied downward, we can basically uh, assume that our moment is going to get bigger and bigger as we go in. And then it's going to be symmetrical, so it's going to get smaller as we get back out. And it's going to start at zero, it's going to end at zero. So what does this tell us, right? Well, we know that our maximum moment has to be in the middle, right? Because it's going to get bigger and bigger, and then it's going to get smaller and smaller. So we know that our maximum moment is going to occur at 12 feet. So we can write that max at 12 feet. So let's figure out what that moment is at 12 feet so we can plug it into our equation. So first of all, we have this force body diagram. Let's figure out what our support reactions are so we can draw that cross-sectional area. So some of the forces in the y is equal to zero. And now we know that a and y has to equal b of y, right, because it's symmetrical. So we can plug this in as the two forces in the y are a of y and b of y. And so we can just add those together to get two a of y. And then we have to subtract your distributed load which is gonna be two, or not two, I don't know why I did two. Right, it's eight feet here, and then there's eight feet here, so it's gonna be 16 feet times that distributed load, and all that has to equal zero. So you're gonna get that A of Y is equal to B of Y is equal to eight W. And so when you plug in W right here, I guess we can get that's equal to, right? What is that, 40? Kip. I hope that's 40, I'm pretty sure it is. Five times eight, yeah. No? Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trusting myself. Okay, so let's find what the moment is at that point. Let's take a cut. So we're going to go, go ahead and draw our force body diagram again. And whether this four feet, four feet, not F feet. All right, what happened to here? So let's draw our reactions. Well, we have A of Y. We know what A of Y is now. Let's just keep it, let's just write it in terms of W, just for fun, right? We have this, and then this distributed load here is pushing downward, and that's four feet in, right? Because it's eight feet and eight feet. And its magnitude is eight W. Cool. So then we go all the way to our end of our beam. We're gonna have our shear stress, and we're gonna have our moment. And so this moment is what we're trying to find. So let's take some of the moments. Set it equals zero. So we're gonna get that this moment, right, is going counterclockwise, so we're gonna add it. And we have this 8w at the end, and that's 12 feet away, and it's making us wanna rotate clockwise. So we need to subtract the force of 8w times its distance of 12. Then this 8w is making us wanna rotate counterclockwise, so we're gonna add it, plus 8w, distance of eight. Right, eight plus, or four plus four. That's equal to zero. So you solve this, and you get that moment is equal to 32, W, and you can plug in five and get that it's equal to 160. And this is M kip feet. Oh, 
Okay, so then all we have to do is find our moment of inertia and then we can solve using the equation. So moment of inertia is gonna be pretty easy. So looking at this, right, we know the equation for moment of inertia is equal to 112 base times height for rectangles. And because we have all the rectangles in our shape, that's all we need to use. Now, usually if you have to use parallel axis theorem, you have to account for distance in the y, right? There's a little bit more to this equation. That being said, if we choose the right shapes, uh, we can basically pick only shapes that lie on the center of mass. And you might say, how are we gonna do that? Well, we know that our y bar is equal to 5.3 inches, right? Because the shape is symmetrical and the total height is 10.6, it's gonna be 5.3 is the height of our y bar. So we can find shapes that lie only in the center of this. And how are we gonna do that? Well, first of all, let's take the first shape to be the whole rectangle, right? This whole thing. So we're gonna take all of that and then we're gonna subtract it by these rectangles here. So we take the moment of inertia of the green rectangle and subtract it by the moment of inertia of these two rectangles. So we're gonna go I, right? Is equal to 112, so we can factor out the 112. So for the green rectangle, the base is eight inches and the height is 10.6 inches. Cube that. Then we're gonna subtract it by the two rectangles. So the base of this is gonna be, we know the whole base is eight, and then we have this 1.3 section cut out. So the base of that rectangle is 7.7, .7, or you can do uh, basically two of them, and then you have to find the base of each one of them by themselves. So I'm gonna do it this way, and then the height of that is gonna be 10 regardless. So plugging into this equation, you get that I is equal to 152.334 inches to the fourth. All right, so let's plug it into our equation. So we're gonna do max bending stress is equal to, so the moment we found 160, it's in kip feet, so let's convert it to inches by, by multiplying by 12. Then all we have to do is multiply by the maximum distance. So y in this case is gonna be the furthest distance from the centroid which is gonna be 5.3 inches, right? You could either go down 5.3 inches or up 5.3 inches. Doesn't make a difference, so 5.3. And then moment of inertia, 152.334. And I can find our max bending stress is equal to 66.8 KSI. That's very poor K. That's our answer. Cool, so that's how you solve this kind of problem. Check out the previous video for the same kind of problem approached a different way. And yeah, uh, check out my playlist for more problems from chapter six, including bending stress and all that. And thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.